Have you ever wondered how Starbucks tracks you down to promote your favorite coffee? Or have you also even wondered how Dunkin Donuts sends you a promotional message when you pass by on one of its store? Well, all of those are possible thanks for the technological development in marketing aspects that creates a strategy for geomarketing. But first, what is geomarketing? Geomarketing is just a form of marketing, it's in the word, and it's basically just using location intelligence to reach people at the right time and the right place. It's like geotargeting where you're delivering content to users based on locations they're in or where they've previously been or visited. Here's an example of how it works. Say a consumer visited a car dealership over the last couple of days. It's safe to assume that that person is shopping for a car. Now it's up to these dealers, now that they know that this customer is out there around their location looking at these different cars, it's up to them to deliver that ad, that discount, that sale that this consumer is looking for. And now that they know that they're out there searching for this type of product, they can do that. And the one that's doing that is going to be the one that's making the sale. So, there are three types of geomarketing tactics, which are geotargeting, geofencing, and beacons. Imagine that you're at work. You pick up your phone, you check your social media, and you see an ad for a new shopping mall. And it's just five minutes away from you. The lunch hour comes, and you head over there to buy a snack. All right, all because an app on your phone tracked your location and sold this data to an advertiser. And that's not all. Every website that you visit knows your location based on your IP and may show you different content accordingly. Your phone's GPS also reveals your location, and so does your phone's Wi-Fi by regularly pinging available networks. Geofencing means you are using GPS to send out very specific messages to people that are within a location or region, thus within a fence, if that makes sense. For example, a store owner could set up a geofence around their physical location. When people pass through that location, they're going to be triggered an alert on their device. This alert could say anything, any type of message, discount, upcoming sale, early bird sale, what's happening now at the store, and most likely they're going to stop by. They're in that location. If they're running errands or they don't have too much to do, they're going to stop by because why not? Bluetooth beacon technology has been getting a lot of buzz lately, but the area that is at the center of the heat map is their usage in retail stores. The idea is fairly simple. A small device that runs on batteries would be installed on a wall, a countertop, or a ceiling of a retail store, and it could be many of them installed there. They would in turn send out very short data strings to all the Bluetooth receivers around them, typically your smartphone. And all of this happens on a new technology called Bluetooth Low Energy or Bluetooth Smart. It's different than the Bluetooth you use right now, primarily because it uses very little energy and it doesn't require all that tedious pairing and connection. Now the short little messages that the Bluetooth beacon sends out that your phone picks up instruct your phone to go to the web and pull down content that's related to where you are or what you're doing. It can be very focused on the immediate area where you're standing or it could be widened out to relate to the entire store. So why do retailers should consider your marketing? 30% of the world's population is already using location-based marketing service. 80% of the customer say that they are willing to get location-based alerts from the businesses. 70% of the customer say that they are willing to share the location if they get something valuable in return. And then, optimizing for local search has been shown to yield twice the click-through rate of regular advertising. Besides the advantages of geomarketing strategy, there is one major concern about the geomarketing, which is privacy. One of the earliest backlashes regarding privacy issues came from Nordstrom customer when that retailer tracked down customer through its physical location for market research purposes. The word creepy was applied at the time and is still a word commonly found in a discussion of how location-based marketing can tend to make people feel. The concern about privacy continues to rise because the constant data leakage and also data transaction that happen over the years. Ultimately, 
gathering information about people's location and keeping the data for commercial purposes put companies in danger because they could lose credibility. In order to resolve this major problem of geomarketing, developing a complete privacy policy is the right step before implementing a location intelligence software system. The policy should inform the user's source of data generation and all geodata have to be anonymized and never be used to track one particular person. If the company happens to be in Europe region, they can follow the GDPR guidelines that give a protection for the users by guaranteeing them the power to access, restrict, correct, and transfer data from any company. At the end of the day, giving customer the choice to share or keep the data private will become much more important because it will make them feel comfortable and make sure the privacy is secured. That's it for the quick explanation of geomarketing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more interesting content in retail management.